how do we focus our minds? This focus of the mind is actually very important for success in the world and in spiritual life also. Swami Vivekananda said, the difference between an ordinary person and a great person lies in the degree of concentration. And he himself had extraordinary powers of concentration. So focus of the mind is necessary for, for anything and everything in life. Now, the yogic approach, the Raja Yoga or Patanjali Yoga approach, that is the science of concentration par excellence. Mm. In fact, in modern positive psychology, they have studied this focus of mind concentration. One psychologist said that the quality of your life mm. depends on how much you can concentrate and what you concentrate on. Not just how much you can concentrate, what you concentrate on. Um, actually, this lady who wrote the book, Rapt, R-A-P-T, Rapt, um, she's talking about a cancer patient who uh, suffered a lot and decided that she would not um, uh, keep her mind on suffering anymore because it's inevitable that suffering is going to come. Rather, she's going to devote her mind to her uh, art hmm. uh, or writing, I think. And as she learned to do that, she found the quality of her life became better. In fact, subjectively she was happier than, when she, than before cancer. So she says that, um, what you think about? So am I thinking about my uh, writing and art or am I thinking about uh, the pain and the cancer and the co-payments mm. <laughs> and so on? Uh, what am I thinking of? Where do I put my mind? And how much of the mind I can put on that? Milton said in Paradise Lost, the mind in its own place can make, make a heaven of hell and a hell of heaven. So it has been studied. A classic book on, in this regard is Mihai Jigzen Mihai's Flow. Yeah. You're aware of that book? Yeah. So he has studied this phenomenon of attention and its link with the quality of life. And in fact, he mentions Patanjali Yoga there. Mm. He says, the best methodology that I have seen for, for uh, attainment of flow is in this ancient technique of uh, Patanjali Yoga. Yeah. Am I audible to everybody? Yes. So that's one method by, by Patanjali Yoga. Mm. That's the method of concentration, where you train your mind to think of one thing and keep on excluding everything else, bringing your mind back to again, that thing again and again. And there's a whole science in it. In fact, Mihai Chikzen Mihai, there, there he points it out that it's basically a function of two things. One is the challenge posed by the environment and other is your skill. It's, um, he gives an example. Suppose you're playing tennis. When you begin to play tennis, it's a great thing just to return a serve. So all your energies and your concentration, focus, you're all aroused and ready to face the challenge. And if you're able to return the serve, that is, you attain flow there. Yeah. But that flow point, it, it's a match between the challenge and your skills. Your skill is exactly up to that level. But then this point of flow is dynamic. Yeah. After some time, what happens is, if you keep just returning a serve, it becomes boring after some time because your skill has now exceeded the challenge. Now you need to up the challenge. So maybe you need to play a game. Then you maybe need to play a, ga a game against a good player and so on. So um, this flow, focus, is a question of challenge and skill. Too much challenge, like in a workplace which is full of pressure, you, many people know in Manhattan it's like that. Then uh, if your skill, your capacity is below the level of challenge, it leads to anxiety. Yeah. Uneasiness, anxiety, strain. If the challenge is way below your skills, it leads to boredom. If they are well balanced, at that point you get flow, focus, what you are asking. What does that mean practically? Practically what it means is that if you want focus and flow, you need to increase the challenge to meet your abilities. If the challenge is beyond your abilities, the environment is putting too much pressure on your uh, abilities, then you need to break it down into smaller chunks and deal with it one at a time, a little bit at a time, manageable bits at a time. That's in principle. It's easier said than done. 
But there are other things to consider also in focus. One thing is, one, one thing which scatters our minds is self-interest. If I am in it for myself, if my idea is that I am in it for this particular person, then always I'll be tense. What have I gained? What have I lost? How much do I get out of this? I'm not relaxed anymore. Selfishness leads to a scattered mind. It can lead to a kind of narrow focus on my own interests, but always it will be vulnerable and you're open to anxiety and fear and um, frustration. Unselfishness. The unselfish mind is relaxed mind. So the more you're, you are about doing good to the organization you work for, the family unit you are with, or the community, or in general for others, you are relaxed about yourself. Or you are worshipping God in your actions. You are offering all of your actions up as worship of the Lord. You, you, it's not so much what I'll get out of it. Swami Ranganathanandaji said, what is spirituality after all? Simplest definition of spirituality. Most practical. He said, spirituality is, when I close my eyes, I find peace within. When I open my eyes, my attitude is, what can I do for you? With eyes open, what can I do for you? Here is the world, what can I give, what can I do? And I close my eyes, there is peace within. Our problem is just the opposite. That Swami, when I close my eyes, all sorts of disturbance within. All sorts of thoughts, restlessness within. And when I open my eyes, not what I can do for you, what can I get from you? So this is just the opposite of spirituality. This is worldliness. So, unselfishness to the extent that we can be unselfish, to that extent mind will be relaxed and better focused. The focus which comes out of selfishness is a narrow, ba ba a narrow band focus, which leads to um, unpleasantness and tension and frustration. Another insight. Love need leads to focus. So what I love, my mind automatically is drawn to that and easily focused, without all sorts of techniques. You don't have to do this breathing technique, this thing and that thing. Uh, it automatically leads to um, focus there. So, so uh, for example, a mother in, in, in a house is looking after the young child, right? So, because the, the mother loves the child, yes, yes. because the mother loves the child, all activities are done. She's cleaning, cooking, um, taking care of the child's uh, homework, getting ready to take the child to school, and so on. All of that is being done, and yet the mind is focused on the child and the needs of the child, right? So love leads to, leads to focus. Bhakti, devotion to God, leads to focus automatically and easily, without effort, effortlessly so. And one more thing, this is what we discussed today, no mind. When you realize that, that the, you are that one existence consciousness place, and all of this world is your appearance, then the mind remains calm and steady, like the unflickering flame. Look at the mind of that prince, the story of the princess of Kashi. The mind of the prince was disturbed and agitated. You will say, you will smile and say, unnecessarily so. For what? But that's exactly our condition. Unnecessarily so. For what? One Swami put it very funnily. You know, he said, before we come to Advaita, our reaction to the world is, what? <laughs> and after we get Advaita, our reaction is, so what? <laughs> So that calmness, that relaxed, focused, attitude, steady attitude comes from that. That is no mind. No mind is not, not thinking, not shutting down the mind. This, that is no mind. So these are some of the ways. If you have, those who are discerning, you would have seen, I basically talked about karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and uh, jnana yoga. Yeah, these are the ways. Thank you. Om Shanti 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 
हरि ओम तत्सत श्री राम कृष्णा रूपण मस्तुम